Hey, thanks for watching my video. Tonight I'm going to show you um, how I make a prime rib. So this is a 16 pound, 16.5 pound prime rib from Save-A-Lot. It was $65. You do the math. I paid $3.99 a pound for a seven bone prime rib, standing rib roast. This is from Save-A-Lot. You can see there's not much marble in it. And then down here at the end that I like, still not a lot of marble. But for $3.99 a pound, how can you beat that for prime rib? I love prime rib. I don't care if it's got a marble, if it doesn't have a marble, if it's lean. Um, this is a south of USDA beef. Um, it is from Mexico. And I have bought quite a few prime ribs from Save a Lot. And I'm, I'm at the point where I can make them where they're almost delicious. This is my uh, second time actually French boning a prime rib. Um, the first time I did it was Christmas and it turned out really well. So I figured I would do it again. The, uh, I've, been, I've been buying my meat since COVID started. I'm not eating out as much so uh, I've been spending the money that I would eat out by buying meals and I don't know maybe eight months ago I decided that I was going to try to feed 10 people for under a hundred dollars eating prime rib um, salad sides and dessert and only shop for all my ingredients that save a lot and I was I was in it at about ninety dollars um, and again it was a 15 pound prime rib and I want to say I paid four ninety nine a pound for it this one was three ninety nine on sale four ninety nine is pretty good too when you go to Costco and they're twelve ninety nine a pound and I, I personally can't tell the difference between a Costco prime rib and a save a lot prime rib once it's been cooked uh, the way I do mine is I smoke it in a Traeger grill. I am going to do a video uh, on later on uh, smoking in my Traeger grill this particular prime rib. Uh, this is video was shot on a Monday night and I'm going to let this sit in my refrigerator until Friday. And then probably about Friday at noon, I'm going to pull it out and set it on the counter to get it room temperature. And then at about, I don't know, maybe 3 o'clock, I'll throw it on my Traeger grill and smoke it for a few hours until I can get it to 130 degrees. So what you're watching me do, and what you've been watching me do while I'm talking away at you, is I'm cutting the bone off of the prime rib um, and this is what most grocery stores will do for you if you're buying a standing rib roast um, they will cut that bone away and the knife I'm using is a a boning knife uh, I bought it off of Amazon it was sixteen dollars you can probably do this with a fish fillet knife but a boning knife is a little a little bit more solid than a fillet knife is but you want a very very sharp knife that will slice right through the meat and you see how nicely that um, this knife just slices through the meat like uh, like it's a razor blade or a hot knife through butter so I'm gonna cut this bone completely off of the roast so it's gonna go from a standing rib roast and then as soon as this last section is off now we have two pieces now we have beef rib so beef rib like you put on your barbecue grill and then we have ribeye so there's the beef rib and there's ribeye and then this membrane here this membrane has to come off so if you're if you're doing beef ribs, if you're going to grill beef ribs and 
I love beef ribs. I love everything about prime rib, ribeye, beef rib, whatever you want to call this cut of meat. That I love all of it. I, I like this cut of meat better than I like filet mignon. Um, but if you are if you are going to prepare a beef rib um, for barbecuing or smoking, you want to remove this membrane. So anytime you're doing ribs, even if you're doing pork ribs, when you buy a slab of pork ribs, the bottom of those ribs has this rubbery, vinyl-like uh, membrane that covers it up. So get it started and then just peel this membrane off the bone um, like you're pulling the window tent off your car or uh, you're pulling the wallpaper off a wall but you want to remove this membrane. This membrane will allow the meat and the bones to cook a lot better evenly. Uh, it'll give you more flavor and when somebody bites into one of these ribs um, they're not getting a big old chunk of rubber in their mouth. So peel that membrane off. So there it is. I've got most of that junk off there. You don't want to eat that crap anyway. So get it off there. And the reason I'm making this video is just to show you that yeah you can go to a grocery store. Save a lot is where I've been going for since I since I found their first meat sale, I've been going to save a lot, um, and their food's really good. So I'm happy with save a lot at this point, and I've saved a lot of money because you're supposed to. Right across the street from our save a lot is an Ingles, and they're extremely expensive. This would have been about nine ninety nine a pound at the Ingles, and it wouldn't have been any better quality. I buy my ribs at Save a Lot. It's the same Smithfield ribs that you'd buy at the Ingles. And I'm peeling off this layer of fat. So some people will say leave the fat on because it, you know, that fat cooks down and cooks into the meat. Blah 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 blah. Um, but I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna cut it off. Because I'm gonna put seasoning and stuff, and I want that seasoning to soak into the meat, not into the fat. And uh, when I smoke this, this is gonna be very tender. I'll smoke it for a few hours, uh, and then I'll let it rest for a half hour. And this piece of meat will just be amazing. And a lot of that has to do with the seasoning and the um, meat tenderizer I put on it. But out of a 16-pound uh, prime rib you see I've I've cut off quite a bit of fat and I'll probably have a pound of fat once I get done uh, Frenching this this chunk of meat and the goal is to peel this fat away as you see me I'm, I'm cutting it off but on the the side that's closest to me I want it to to be trimmed back all that fat and grizzle so when I French the bone, those bones will stick out past the meat. And it kind of makes the meat look like it's got a crown. It makes it look pretty cool. So again, this boning knife, I got it off of Amazon. It was $16 shipped to my house here in the mountains of North Carolina. Um, it's very sharp. I went and bought a new knife sharpener at the same time uh, just so I could keep this knife very sharp and then you, you see I've, I've cut pretty much all that meat off and then I just push the uh, push the meat back under and you, you'll kind of get the feel once I start putting that bone back on it but again I, I do this I do um, a couple dinners at my house a month and I invite eight to ten people over we hang out make fun of each other um, you really can't go to a restaurant safely right now or, uh, so the the hundred bucks that I spend feeding eight to ten people they're getting a better meal at my house than 
what we could get at a restaurant for several hundred dollars. I know in this area, if I get a 16 ounce prime rib dinner, it's probably gonna set me back about $40. My wife's gonna want something to eat. I don't know why, but she's gonna to wanna to go to the restaurant and get something to eat. And then I'm gonna to have to spend another $40 on her plus a tip. So I just dropped a hundred bucks on one meal. Um, and since COVID hit, I've been doing this. I've been buying a, a nice big roast and I do, I'll do a boneless ribeye. I do the prime rib, the seven bone prime rib. And another one I like to do a roast out of is uh, New York strip. If I can get a, a New York strip roast, um, that's just, that's, that, that's amazing. Especially if you can get one with all that grizzle in it. Um, once you cook it, all that grizzle kind of gelatin, gelatinates and soaks into the meat and makes the meat nice and tender. And I bought a few of those from Save-A-Lot at some of their sales. But you see I'm Frenching the bone right now and I'm just cutting away about an inch of meat from between those bones. And don't let that meat go to waste. If you have a dog, your dog's going to love this meat. My dog's sitting just off camera to the right of me and she's waiting for me to throw those scraps down. And like I said, this is the second time that I've done this. Uh, and I watched a video probably just like what you're watching. And the guy spent a lot of time. He, he cleaned all the fat and, and stuff off the bone and really cleaned the, the meat off those bones. Uh, but I, ha I found the first one I did after it smoked for a few hours, all that meat was pretty much cooked into the bone or cooked off the bone. And when I pulled it out of my smoker, uh, the, the roast was, it, it was just beautiful. It was gorgeous. And then whatever of this prime rib doesn't get eaten on Friday night, I bought a slicer off Amazon. It was about $300, $350 for this meat slicer. And I'll take this roast and I'll slice it as fine, paper thin as I can possibly slice it and uh, make a nice au jus. And then like Sunday, I'll invite a bunch of people over and we'll have French dip. Now watch this. I just dropped a string on the floor. But if you look at that floor that I'm standing on, that floor is less than a day old. I just put that floor down this week. Um, and that string fell down on a towel because the floor is brand new I put a clean bath towel on the floor and uh, that's going to keep anything that I splash or uh, any seasonings that might come off the counter they're going to land on a towel that I'm actually standing on uh, because my floor is so new I haven't even sealed it yet so don't worry about that string that landed on the floor because it just landed on a clean bath towel it'll be okay so I use this Adolf meat tenderizer. Um, it helps uh, tenderize the, um, the meat. Uh, I guess Mexico, they don't put a lot of fat on their cows. It's kind of desolate. The cows are just roaming. They kill them, slaughter them, send them here to the U.S. But that's okay. And then this seasoning is called bullshit seasoning. And... This stuff's pretty good. I got a box of this for Christmas. I got bullshit, no shit, and uh, uh, another one, good shit for pork. It's for pork ribs and pork roasts. I did the I did a pork roast a couple weeks ago. That was the last roast I did in my smoker. Turned out amazing. So if you have a few extra dollars, I think it's like fifteen dollars for one of these cans of seasoning try it it's worth the fifteen dollars um, so I seasoned the inside and I went ahead and seasoned the, the bone and this is how the bone came off and I just flip it over so the bones down and then just kind of adjust my roast so it's sitting back on the bone the way it came off the bone and I just start at one end and we just tie and it doesn't have to be any fancy knot 
And if you watch me, what I do is I'll like wrap the string around the other end of the string twice, pull it tight. And if you do it twice, it doesn't slip when you pull it tight like that. And then you can go ahead and get your second knot in there to hold it in place. And then I take another piece of string and I go to the second bone. And pretty much once you get your second bone tied off, um, then your bone and your meat aren't going to go sliding around anywhere. It's, it's pretty much there for good. Um, so I get my knot tied in and then I'm going to start on the other end of the roast. But doesn't that look good? So Friday night we have a, a potluck and that's what I'm making this for. It's it's our turn to host the potluck at our house and there's five couples and we go to somebody else's house uh, once a month the ten of us all get together at somebody's house and we each bring a covered dish uh, the last one we went to was uh, I believe it was spaghetti it was spaghetti it was amazing um, there's a couple of different kind of spaghetti sauces and sausages uh, meatballs it was really good uh, we've, we've had great chicken great pork roasts uh, but again, it's it's my turn. I usually do a beef, and I've done a ribeye roast. I've done a New York strip roast. I and I, this would be my prime rib. A few of the people who we do the potluck with, they came at Christmas, so they've had this prime rib, this French cut prime rib at Christmas time. Um, but I got the. Uh, the bullshit seasoning as a Christmas present um, from our friends Joe and B. Thank you, Joe and B. If you watch this video, um, so they're coming Friday night. So I want to make sure that they get a taste of this seasoning on a nice piece of meat. And on a seven bone, on a seven bone roast, it's going to take you six strings. To hold it in place so it's easy as that you know I rambled on while I was tying these strings off but you were watching you saw how easy it was to uh, tie this off this is the same thing your meat cutter would do for you in the grocery store and I believe you can buy a prime rib and ask the guy in your meat department to do this for you and they'll do it for free but there you go there's my roast all tied up and now we need to season it. So you can, you like I said, you can trim off those bones. You can trim all the meat off those bones. But once you start cooking it, that meat kind of just like soaks into the bone, um, and it's going to look great when that roast comes out of the oven, or in my case, when it comes off the Traeger grill. So it's ready to go. Here's my meat tenderizer. So where the fat layer is, um, normally when you buy a prime rib, there's a, a nice thin amount of fat here. Um, but that fat is just so dense on, on these Mexican cows, it, it kind of almost needs to come off. And then you put this uh, meat tenderizer on, and when it sits in the refrigerator for a few days, that meat tenderizer really does its thing. And you'd never know that that this was not a USDA prime cut of meat when I'm done with it. This is probably the same stuff a restaurant does, save cost. And then they charge you 30 bucks for 16 ounces. And for twice twice that 30 bucks, you can buy 15 pounds in the grocery store. So I put a massive amount of seasoning on. So I put my meat tenderizer on. I didn't go overboard with the meat tenderizer because uh, meat tenderizer is it's just uh, MSG, monosodium glutinate. Uh, it's really not that good for you. It's not going to kill you. 
but some people it could make their heart race or whatever so I don't put a lot of meat tenderizer on I put just enough so hopefully it soaks into the meat and tenderizes it a little bit more um, but I put a ton I put a ton of seasonings on my beef and, and then I pat it in and then I'll let it sit in the refrigerator usually when I do a roast like this it'll sit in the refrigerator for three to four days and then when I take it out of the refrigerator the day that I'm going to cook it I'll pull it out and I'll uncover it and I'll put another layer of fresh seasoning on it and when it starts to smoke you see that orange it'll turn the meat the outer layer of the meat it'll turn it just a beautiful burgundy red and it'll that flavor will just seep it'll it'll just saturate through the whole piece of meat but that's my video on how to uh, French the bone on a piece of prime rib um, come back in a week or so and I'll show you my Traeger grill and this thing going to town on it so thanks for watching